Capitulum Duode Tricesimum Pericula Mares, Lecture 3, Versus Quadragesimus Primus, Usque Adversum Sexagesimum. Quid non vivit Dominus Tuus? What? Your Lord is not alive? Imo vero vivit, nam tertio die, Jesus resurrexit a mortuis, et quadragesimo die post, in celo ascendit. No, on the contrary, he is alive. Notice the strong negation, the denial, on the contrary, vero, he is alive, for on the third day, ablative of time when, Jesus rose from the dead, surgere, surexise, surrectum esse, et quadragesimo die post in celum ascendit. And on the fortieth day afterwards, he went up into heaven, post in adverb, quadragesimo die, expressing uh, the period of time elapsed, afterwards by that many days he went up into heaven ascended the perfect tense immortalis est filius dei sicut patereus deus vivus the son of god is deathless immortal just like his father the living God. Homines mortales nascuntur ac moriuntur. Mortal human beings are born and they die. Deus immortalis semper vivit. The immortal God always lives. Sed ipsa male naro ex hoc libello recitabo tibi aliquid. But I myself tell the story poorly, male adverbial, slightly irregular, no long quantity in the final e. Ex hoc libello, from this little book, libellus, diminutive of liber, libri, I will read aloud to you, recitabo, to you, tibi dative, aliquid, accusative, neuter, singular, something. I will read to you something out of this little book. Lydia libellum, quem adhuc intravestem occultavit, promet et medo ostendit. Lydia takes out the little book and shows it to Matus, Matus in the dative case, promete, to bring out, to bring forth. And then there's a relative clause in the second line explaining about that book, saying something more about that book, which, accusative case, which she, up to that point, ad hoc, um, has hidden within her clothing. Qui manum extendens libellum apprehendit et qui liberes iste inquit. So the qui that begins the sentence here picks up very directly on the masculine thing or person mentioned at the end of the previous sentence, if the context makes that clear. He, probably is the easiest thing to do in English, he reaching out his hand extendens manum extendens present participle in the nominative he reaching out his hand takes hold of the little book and says which book is this of yours or that of yours we would probably say this because it's right here in front of the characters what little book is that of yours qui interrogative relative adjective agreeing with liber Scriptus est, a quodam iudeo, nomine Matteo, qui simul cum Christo vixit, et discipulus eius fuit. It was written, perfect passive, 
by a certain Jew, quidam, quedam, quodam, by a certain Jew, by the name of Matthew, in respect of his name Matthew, ablative of respect, who lived vixit, vivere vixise, who lived at the same time as Christ, or who lived together with Christ, and was his student, was his disciple. In hoc libro Matthäus, qui suis oculis auribusque dominum nostrum viderat et audiverat, dicta et facta eius memorat. In this book, Matthew, who had seen and had heard, pluperfect tense, our Lord, dominum nostrum, with his own eyes and ears, ablative of means, dicta et facta eius memorat, he recounts, not exactly remembers, but he recalls or he recounts, relates, commemorates, but recounts, it seems, is a good word, his, his sayings, dicta, and his actions, his deeds, so dicta and facta, both a neuter, accusative, plural. Medus, qui legere non didicet, lidie librum reddit, eum eamque rogat, ut aliquid sibi legat. Medus, who didn't learn how to read, didicet, perfect tense from Discere hands the book back to Lydia and asks her to read something to him. So, rogare a verbum postulandi, a subset of the verba studiendi, studendi et voluntatis, and asks that she, asks her that she read something to him the stilted way to do it, the smooth, fluent way to do it in English, and asks her, final infinitive, to read something, aliquid, to him, the subject of the verb in the first place of rogat, medus, and so that reflexive sibi pointing back to the subject, not of the dependent clause, legat, which is Lydia, but to the subject of the main sentence, uh, and the main verb, medus, rogat. Que continuo librum evolvit? Who, or she, immediately opens the book, evolvere, language of reading from scrolls. If this is a codex, then it's, you know, it's sort of metaphorically or, uh, applied or applied by extension. She immediately opens the book, Et legam tibi inquit, de viro claudo, cui Jesus imperavit, ut surgeret, et toleret lectum suum, et domum ambularet. And says, I will read to you, legam future tense, first person singular, I will read to you about the lame man, de viro claudo, whom Jesus ordered, cui Jesus imperavit, cui dative case imperare, taking a dative object, whom Jesus ordered to get up and pick up his bed and to walk home. Notice that the controlling verb, the verb that's setting up the dependent clause, is perfect tense, imperavit. So then we see the imperfect subjunctive, in surgeret, toleret, and ambularet. These were things that, when he gave the command, they were still not yet done. They were still incomplete. They were yet to happen. <laughs> 